trade paperbacks, threat or menace? Find out on today's episode of the Classic Comics Podcast. Welcome to the Classy Comics Podcast, where we search for the best comics in the universe. From Boise, Idaho, here is your host, Adam Graham. Welcome to the Classy Comics Podcast. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. This is something I will try to do infrequently. Mostly I want to be talking about comic books and trade uh, paperbacks. But sometimes there can be a general comic topic that's worth a talk, particularly since part of my vision for the show is to talk to folks who are not necessarily been into collecting or reading for a quite some time. When you say reading a comic book, people will often imagine you sitting there with the traditional uh, comic book with its glossy cover, held together by a staple or two, and generally with a few ads in there. I think of that specific experience, I've only read one in uh, all of 2017, and that was an issue of The Tick. For most of my comic reading, I've either been reading from trade paperbacks, or I've been reading from uh, digital, and digital's another conversation. Today, we're going to focus on trade paperbacks, which collect uh, multiple issues. Generally, a small trade might collect uh, three or four issues of a comic, a larger one might collect 12, and then there are some fairly large collections, uh, omnibuses, such as those that come from a Marvel that can have 20 or 30 different uh, issues in it. Trade paperback collections have become a lot more ubiquitous in recent years. It used to be that uh, only select comics were uh, collected together and sold in trades. Now, pretty much any major ongoing series that either DC or Marvel does is turned into a trade paperback. And there's a lot of work being done on the back catalog of both companies to bring even some titles that hadn't been collected in trade uh, together so that uh, collectors can have them easily in one place and those who haven't read them can discover them for the first time. Uh, so it's a great way to read on up on classic uh, comics and older comics uh, that you just could not buy on an individual basis without a lot of money. And in general, uh, the trade collections can save quite a bit. Uh, remember, pretty much every uh, DC comic is going to be two ninety nine dollars an issue, uh, except for those that are more, and every Marvel comic is going to be three ninety nine dollars an issue. Most trades that I get... I end up paying about $2 per issue uh, for the uh, comics that are in the trade. You also uh, can more easily avoid uh, bad titles. If you see a comic series starting, and from some of the descriptions it sounds interesting, a trade can be a better option just because you can get an overall impression of what people actually thought of the comics in the trade, and based on what you hear, you can have a really good idea of whether this is going to be something that will work for you. It's also important to remember that most ongoing comic book series uh, today, particularly from the big two, are written for the trade. That means that the comics are drawn with the idea that this is going to be in a four or seven part uh, book, and thus many issues are less standalone and more chapters in a book. And this can lead to some frustration for those who get individual issues one at a time. For example, uh, an issue might really not progress the action much, but might show some uh, character moments, which 
if you've been waiting two weeks to a month for the story to move is a little bit annoying. But if it's merely a uh, section in a graphic novel uh, you've gotten, well then it's not a big deal. It might actually contribute positively to the reading experience. Also, with a trade paperback, you can evaluate a series as a whole, which can be uh, crucial. You take, for example, the uh, Secret Empire uh, miniseries that uh, Marvel did last year. The first uh, few issues were met with critical acclaim. Yet, as the story came, uh, went on and various things were revealed... The reviews became decidedly more negative and more negative overall for the series. So you can really just judge the whole uh, arc as a whole if you read it in the trades. I also think that the trades are just a better way to uh, maintain a comic stories uh for you to read. It takes less care, less worry about things getting uh, damaged because you've got a sturdier format. Now, there are some negatives. Uh, first of all, you, uh, you do have a lack of immediacy where you're, you know, waiting several months and you find out uh, afterwards, uh, in some cases as much as six months, as the people who read along in the normal issues. Uh, so you don't have that uh, tension if you've got a really good story and you can be in suspense from month to month, whereas if you just pick up the trade, you know, you get the whole thing resolved. Uh, spoilers are rampant. Uh, you know, if you, you really have to avoid reading about the character to get spoilers, and sometimes it can be tempting to flip ahead to, you know, by uh, checking review sites to find out what's uh, going on. So then again, the major spoiler about, uh, uh, for example, uh, Catwoman's response to Bruce Wayne's marriage proposal uh, was uh, on the pages of USA Today. Still, most pe uh, people did post spoiler warnings about it, but if you're reading the trade, you have to avoid the spoilers for three to four months. And there is, of course, that feeling of reading a comic book. Uh, if you grew up reading a lot of them, you know, you hold the uh, book in your hands, and it's kind of a nostalgic experience just reading it, and you miss out on that uh, with doing the trades. I also think that trades are a little less uh, collectible as an ongoing uh, commodity. But truth be told, most modern comic books are not nearly as uh, collectible as their gold and silver age counterparts, much like... Uh, modern baseball cards are not as collectible as uh, older baseball cards, but they're kind of driven by stories of people selling comic book issues for a million dollars or a baseball card for half a million dollars. Yet those stories have encouraged people not to mistreat comic books and also not to do things like use baseball cards as spokes and bicycles. And as a result, there's just a glut of uh, various comic books and baseball cards around, which means they don't accrue money. That said, there are still some collectible comics, which you may get, such as a rare and prized variant cover, that you're just not going to really get with a trade. So those are the pluses and minuses of the trade paperback which is mostly how I experience uh, comics. Whether that makes sense for you is something you'll have to decide for yourself. But that's all for now. We'll be back to reviewing Classy Comics in our next episode. Uh, if you do have a comment, send it to ClassyComicsGuy at gmail.com. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off. <laughs>